Peace. What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show. Back talking sports as we do. And a lot been going on in the sports world. And I've been ready to break it on down. Had to make sure everything was working right. Um, so I'm back. We're going to talk about this Super Bowl with the Eagles, the Chiefs, as well as some more NBA. Kyrie Irving got traded like he should have been. Uh, He's not going to get the contract he wanted. And I think all of this stuff is his fault. He put himself in this situation. But we're going to break it down. I'm also going to do some live call-ins and answer the stuff in the chat. So if y'all want to come talk more than welcome to and uh also i'm talking a little bit about first take that was on today jay williams it's bad when people put loyalty in front of reality you know that's his brother that's his boy they from duke they got this they got that cool hey dude be wrong man stop trying to Always make excuses for what he does. I mean, it makes Jay Williams sound idiotic. And I'm so glad Stephen A. snapped on his ass today and shut him down with that garbage he be talking. Always trying to say something about why Kyrie did this or that or why everybody all over Kyrie but not Jeff Bezos. And I was sitting there and I said, for one, Kyrie is an employee. Jeff Bezos is a boss. It's a difference when you cut checks and then when you have to get a check cut. Kyrie get pretty big checks cut, but he works for someone. Jeff Bezos don't work for no one. He's his own boss. It's a big difference, and he a big boss. Big billions. Big billions. Okay? He ain't take the video down. He ain't had to. He ain't Kyrie Irving. He, he's, he don't play for no team. He ain't waiting for nobody to give him a paycheck. <laughs> this dude is putting together rocket ships to go to space. He ain't listening to what nobody got to say. What up, Nisi? How you doing, sis? How's everything? Savannah, what's up, Savannah? He's like, nice outfit. I appreciate it. I try to change it up a little bit. Throw on the Jordan. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to put the link if anybody want to talk about the Kyrie Irving trade or uh, the Super Bowl preview. I'm going to put the link in in a little bit, and uh, we'll be able to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to break down my thoughts on this Kyrie Irving trade. And, uh, hold on. All right, there we go. Yeah, so, uh, I'm going to read off exactly what happened. The only thing that I'm a little worried about with that trade is the draft picks. But, uh, I think it's going to be a good trade for the Nets. Then Witty can ball. He ain't going to have all the drama and all the reasons to not show up for work. No, he can't score like Kyrie. And he's not as good as Kyrie. I give it Kyrie his credit. He's a hell of a basketball player. But you got to show up for work. It was these young dudes I used to argue with. All the time last year about Kyrie. And they don't understand. You have to show up for work. Everybody has a job. I don't care what job you have. You could be the best at it. But if you don't show up for work, you will get fired. I don't care what job it is. Whether you're a construction worker. Working uh, you know, for the city. It's true. Unless you're an owner of the company. And if you keep not doing work, your company will go out of business. So, I don't know. 
Gemini Don. He say, my thing is this. We know Kyrie is a good guy. We know his good deeds. However, what does his good deeds have to do with his lack of accountability? All this is Kyrie's fault. And I agree with you a thousand percent. A thousand percent. This ain't a good guy war contest. It's not. Who gives a damn? Dude, this is about basketball. You get paid 30 plus million to play basketball. You don't show up for work to play basketball. You want a basketball contract. It's always something else going on with you that you can't play basketball. You had to take weeks off because of the January 6th riot. What? Dude, it's always something. And this is business. In life, people don't have to pay you. People don't have to pay you. Look at Antonio Brown. I was trying to tell this uh, young young fellas. They ain't want to listen. They just wanted to argue and talk in circles. Didn't listen hard head. Try to tell them you had. Don't nobody have to pay you. Don't nobody have to give you a job. What happened with Marbury? He had game. He had to go to China because the NBA was done. You know, so Juan Blaze, what up? Alan Self, Stephen A. Smith says, look out for KD to Boston. Your thoughts? Ooh. I don't think it's going to happen because KD is older and that would be a horrible trade because, I mean, you got to give up either Tatum or Jalen Brown. Well, why do that? Neither one of them I would give up for KD at this point. KD is getting a, KD is still a top three player in the NBA. Definitely top five right now. But he getting up there. What is KD, like 35 now? And, uh, I mean, the way his game is, he probably got a good three years of prime KD left, which is just crazy how long these guys are playing at their prime now. These guys are really taking care of themselves, even though KD had the Achilles to see LeBron at this level at his age, 38. Wow, I wonder what Jordan could have did had he had never retired ever. He retired twice. Had he had not took those two retirements and just took care of himself and played straight, I wonder what he could have been doing at this age, but it is amazing to see. I, I personally would not do that trade if I was Boston. If I was Brooklyn, I would. I'd get rid of KD old ass and his contract, and if I can get Jalen Brown, oh, yeah, that would be a steal. That would be a steal. You say to 783, AJ, I live here in Dallas, and we the fans are happy and excited, but the news media is shredding, my dude. I agree with you about the draft picks, but Mark Cuban is smart. All right, so here's my thoughts about this trade with Dallas standpoint. This could actually work, but here's the thing. Luka Doncic actually plays like LeBron James. Now, not athletically, but playing style with the ball dominance and the passing and the rebound and score. But he holds the ball so much. So it would be hard for Kyrie to get into rhythm. Now, if Luka plays a little bit more like LeBron, then it could work because I say Kyrie and LeBron won a championship in Cleveland. So Kyrie was a spot-up shooter. And then when LeBron was off the court, he would take over. That's the problem in Dallas. Once Luka's off the court, everything fall apart. So now you can split up the duties and that will work great. But the problem is when they're both on the court. So if you put Kyrie at the one, Tim at the two, and Luka at the three, but see, he can't guard the threes that well, and that's the problem. But if he was at the three and played point forward like a Ben Simmons, it could work. It could work. But... You guys have no defense, man. 
You guys can't stop anybody. Who's going to guard LeBron James on Dallas? Who's going to guard the Kawhi Leonard's? I mean, LeBron won't be in the playoffs. But anyway, who's going to guard these people? You guys have no defense. Who's going to guard Jokic? Who's going to guard Jamal Murray? Who's going? So that's the problem with Dallas is their defense is just horrible. You guys don't have anybody that can guard anybody. You got your center. That's it. So, you know, and yeah, you're right. That's why he didn't get traded to the Lakers because they didn't want to give him a long-term contract, which I wouldn't give Kyrie more than a one and a, and a one and an option. For some reason, it keeps saying my mic is unplugged. The 783 say, no, nah, that's Ben Simmons that be taking off for the whole season. At least Kyrie can and will impact okay Ben Simmons is worse than Kyrie but only recently Kyrie been doing missing seasons and games I don't think he ever played a full season Kyrie always missing games man always for dumb reasons Ben Simmons has lately been missing games for dumb Ben Simmons fell off the map but I was arguing with these young dudes that man for some reason, these young people think they know basketball. Man, I've been watching this stuff for 30 years. Plus, actually more 40 years almost. So, like, I've seen a lot. So when I was trying to tell them, these fools tried to tell me Ben Simmons was better than Zach Levine. You freaking nuts. It's a bunch of idiots. Ben Simmons is falling off the map. His game was trash. He can't shoot anything. That's why he couldn't do anything with LSU when he was in college. And he's only a good defender because his big ass is guarding point guards at six foot ten. He's too big. So yeah, he's a good defender when you that big. That's like Scottie Pippen guarding point guards all the time. <laughs> Tressa C, what up, girl? You say Luke is by far my favorite player to watch. KD is my favorite player, but he doesn't keep still long enough for me to buy a jersey. I know that's right. He needs to stop moving around. I think he should stay in Brooklyn until he retires, and he need to win because otherwise he look like a damn fool. You left Steph Curry and the Warriors to go there for Kyrie, and you had James Harden at one time you had three mvp caliber players on the court in their prime at the same time and y'all only played 16 games together 16 games together and they went 13 and 3 that is horrible that's horrible Dijon Stovall. I was just thinking about how this is supposed to work because they both need the ball to do their thing. Exactly. The only way it can really work is they're going to have to <laughs> basically split it up and one going to have to be on the bench almost. But Luca don't sit down long enough. He playing on what? Almost close to 35 minutes a game or more. So it's only 48 minutes in a game. So it's going to be hard to make it work. They're going to have to figure something out. I think that Kyrie is be gone from Dallas. I don't think Kyrie is going to re-sign with Dallas. Watch. Kyrie is not going to stay in Dallas after this trade. You know. Let's see. 783. Nah, bro, you correct. Ben fell way off, man. He got exposed. Hey, look. I've been watching the NBA for a while, like I said. I've seen players that we thought was going to be dope. And they were having their streaks and doing good. And they get exposed for whatever reason. And it's over. Look at Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin, he was balling. He got exposed. And what happened? Why he didn't keep balling after New York? Because he got exposed that he, you know, wasn't really that good. And, you know, I think he only could, what, go left? 
a few things, but Ben, Ben, what up, Khadijah? You say, what up, big homie? No, Ben was scared to take that shot. He, he, for real. And then he, that's what's horrible because you're scared to take the shot and you're scared to take the free throw. If he could at least shoot free throws, he could average 20 points a game because nobody would be able to stop him from attacking the basket and he would get fouled at least five times a game. Well, that's 10 points right there. At least eight. You see what I'm saying? That's why people don't understand about how important free throw shooting is. If you were Ben Simmons and can shoot free throws, nobody can stop this dude at his position to, from driving to the lane. He would get fouled at least five times a game. That's only one foul a quarter. He would only get fouled r- roughly one time a quarter. That's not a lot. Is that unrealistic? So you get one foul a quarter. That's eight to ten points that you could be getting a night. Easy. He only averaged 14 points a game right now without free throws. So he would be 20 points a game or more. This dude can't shoot a free throw. He can't do nothing, man but be big and run in front of some little dudes and hack the hell out of them. (laughs) He don't want it bad enough. You right. And that's another thing. And I know people get on Jordan and all the old guys now, and I get it. But this part, he was right. These young dudes get way too much money too soon before they have accomplished anything. Then Ben Simmons get like a hundred million dollar contract already, hundred plus million. They ain't did a damn thing. They ain't did a damn thing. A hundred million dollars. I mean, we hear that a lot for players and stuff in the NBA and different stuff. A hundred million. That is lottery money. That's life changing money for your generations of family. If you do a one hundred million, one million dollars, a million dollars, even in today's economy in the recession, it don't do as much as it could have did maybe 20 years ago. But a million dollars is a lot. You got one hundred million dollars and this dude will be like 20, this dude be 25 years old. And already made a hundred million. Ain't did nothing. Won nothing. And still got more on the way. Seven eight three. You say so, Jay, tell me this. Who's the best perimeter defender that's a free agent right now? Right well, everybody signed right now. That's a perimeter free agent that's good. Uh, I don't know offhand all the uh free agents list. You know, uh, let me see. I put this up here. So this on ESPN. Let's see. It doesn't really show. Uh, let's see. NBA. All the fame. Yeah, it don't really show all of that. So I don't know who that could be. Yeah, I'm with Stephen A, man. It's Kyrie, man. He put this on himself. And see, another thing that uh, when I was talking with these youngsters last year about this, they was talking about Stephen A and Kyrie, and Stephen A is hard on Kyrie or whatever the case. And Jay Williams kind of alluded to that today. Oh, my mic was messed up. Can y'all hear me now? Um, but, uh, you know, Kyrie, he's responsible for his own... I mean, live. <laughs> live TV. Um, but, anyway. So, you know... Everybody want to say, oh, Stephen A did this or that, or he made it personal. Man, that's his job to talk about what's going on. Kyrie put his business out there. He opened his mouth about this stuff. He the one talking about all the dumb stuff he talked about and put himself in and not showing up for work for whatever reasons. And that's all on him. 
And I think that that's his job to talk about the stuff. And the reason why I think that the Kyrie was talked about a little bit more because uh, Jay Williams brought up that other people didn't get vaccinated, but it wasn't talked about as much. That's because Brooklyn, and let me know if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that when KD, Kyrie, and James Harden came together as a team, that was a championship team. Don't we talk about championship teams more than scrub teams? Why would we talk about the Washington Wizards? They losing. So who cares if Bradley Bill or did this or that? We talked about Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets because they had a championship caliber team and he didn't show up and they got eliminated in the first round. Had he have played with them that season, last season, and they had some type of camaraderie, they may have been able to beat Boston. They, I mean, what? How many of y'all are going to tell me Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are better players than Kevin Durant and Kyrie? I think they could have had a good chance. I think that was a good matchup. I wouldn't have mind seeing it, but he didn't show up. They didn't jail. Basketball is a rhythm sport, like football. You have to play it. You can't just pop up and do this and that. This ain't YMCA. This is the NBA, the greatest players on earth. Everybody is amazing. So you have to get in rhythm, practice, try all that stuff to get on one level together. And this fool ain't playing, then he only going to play road games. Man, this dude's a fool, man. It cost him possibly a championship. You know, of course we're going to talk about that. And Boston went to the finals? That could have been Brooklyn last year. That could have been Brooklyn. And then KD against the Warriors. That would have been dope. That would have been dope. This fool, man. For some reason, this dang old microphone keeps trying to cut off. But, yeah, man. This dude. I'm going to put this link in if anybody want to ask some questions or talk about anything sports related. Feel free to come on through. Uh, let's see. Khadija, you say those personalities didn't fit even with all that offense. That is true. And that's what really happened. But it's crazy because. I think they would have made it if Kyrie would have showed up to work. They say James Harden got pissed because Kyrie never showed up to work and they making all these special exceptions for him. You know, KD and James Harden already played together and know each other. KD and Kyrie was cool. All we needed was Kyrie and James Harden to be cool. James Harden got pissed with dude, wanted to leave. Kyrie spoiled it. He ruined three franchises, broke up three big threes. He did three, the big three, big three killer. <sighs> Drinking that incredible Hulk juice right up in here. Somebody gave me this. Woo, that's that diabetes juice right there, boy. Ooh, that's that diabetes juice. Got my teeth tingling. Need to water that down. Khadija, I'm so with you, sis. My girl Khadija on it tonight. What up, Khadija? You right, though. They didn't play enough games together. Didn't play enough game, man. You got to get in rhythm. You got to play them games. Same as football. So, you know. It is what it is, man. He blew it. Man, this dang on microphone. Hold on. All right. Yeah. So, and that's something that's real in real life. That's something I used to tell my son. 
You are responsible for your own self-image. Yeah, people may think this or that, but they're going to base what they think off of what you do a lot of times, how you look, how you carry yourself, and your word. Ain't nothing more important than being a man of your word. I used to tell my son that all the time. Be a man of your word. If you can't do something, say you can't. And if you can, make sure you do. And, you know, contract, it's an agreement. Dude ain't show up for work. And nobody got to keep paying you. I don't know how many people got a job where they can keep getting paid and don't show up. I mean, him not showing up is basically not doing the work. So what job can you keep getting paid without doing the work? You know, um, I would have traded his ass too. So, Khadija, you say, yeah, James was mad. He went there for nothing. I know, right? I would have been too. He should have stayed his ass in Cleveland. I mean, I don't know. LeBron was going to leave to L.A. regardless because his son, he wanted him to go out there to that school for basketball and all of that. So LeBron was going to leave no matter what. It wasn't even a basketball decision. It was a family decision for him to come to L.A. His son go to that powerhouse high school where... You know, Scottie Pippen Jr. went and all these NBA players' kids go. Dwayne Wade, kid, dunking in, uh, in some outfits. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so he was gone. But Kyrie, he should have stayed in Boston, actually. Think about it. You had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They were young. They wasn't they wasn't in their prime yet. They in their prime now. Kyrie could have been he only it's only been what? Two, three it's been three years. Two, three years. Three years. They went to the finals last year. So what? If he would have stayed in Boston another two years, he could have had a, a championship team. They could have been the big three. Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum and Kyrie. Now they got Malcolm Brogdon, who a lot of people don't know who he is. He was here in Indiana for a few years. He's a good player. He's a really good player. He's very underrated. He's very smart, too. His father was a judge and all this and that. Boston is going to be good. You know, a lot of people, that was a weak rookie class, kind of, when he came out. And as far as they wasn't an explosive rookie at the time, but he was rookie of the year. But Malcolm Brogdon is good. And so now, what they're doing now could have been Kyrie with them. So, let's see. Kobe Reviews said, y'all have to understand, people thought Harden and CP3 wouldn't work in Houston, but they proved us wrong. They didn't work. They did do good, and they did come close. But in the end, that defense, and then they relied too much on shooting the three in Houston. They lived and died by the three. What, they missed 30 threes in one game? 7-8-3, three. but check it. The common thread between KD, Harden, and Kyrie is that they all been to the championship before, but only Kyrie and KD got rings. I'm willing to take a gamble. And I wouldn't even say Harden really went to the championship. He did, and he did ball. He didn't ball, actually. He he flopped. But that was a baby Harden. It was only his third year with OKC. He wasn't the 25-plus point-a-game player since that he became after he left OKC. So, technically, you're right, but it wasn't prime harder. KD was in his prime and Kyrie was in his prime. I think Harden really needed to make it to the finals in his prime and lead a team there to solidify his career. 
because Harden put up some hella numbers to be a short dude, relatively short, NBA-wise, 6'4". Uh, that girl, what's up? You say, I haven't watched a game this season. The Lakers are bad for my health. I hope Kyrie would reunite with LeBron on the Lakers. I'm just saying. I agree. Um, I haven't watched too much this season. My Bulls, I can't believe they fell apart. <laughs> they were looking so good last year, and I don't know what the hell happened. Lonzo Ball is another person that's just injured too much. Get him the hell out of here. You have to show up for work. It doesn't matter how good you are, and you can score 100 points a game. If you can only play two games, the hell? So that's a problem for us. And uh, the reason Kyrie didn't go to the Lakers is because he won a long-term contract, more than likely. And the Lakers are trying not to give up too much right now, draft picks and other stuff, and definitely don't want to give him a long-term contract. And with Anthony Davis hurt this year, Trading for Kyrie would have been pointless because they still can't win a championship without AD. And it's over. Anthony Davis, another player that's always hurt. Golly, that man is hurt. That's embarrassing to be that big and hurt. But I get it. You can't help if you hurt in life. And you can't help, you know, what you're going through sometimes. Um, it just doesn't seem fair sometimes when you see a LeBron James stay relatively healthy his entire career. He'd never really have a major injuries or miss too many games. I think he played like 55 games once, but for the most part, played like 70 games every year. So, Woo! The aftertaste keep calling me. It be calling me. Hey, let's see. <laughs> the 783. <laughs> I just see your comment. Oh, man. Let's see. Khadija, you say Houston coach was a one trick pony, never making adjustments. Who are you talking about? Dan Tony? They should have kept Kevin McHale. I mean, Kevin McHale is a better coach than Dan Tony to me. Dan Tony is a great offensive coach, offensive mind, but his defense is horrible. The NBA plays the Dan Tony style actually now today with the running gun, barely touch anybody on D which is whack, but <laughs> when it's playoff time, you got to stop somebody, you got to play D, and that's when that D'Antoni style of play always falls apart. D'Antoni's teams always do good in the regular season. Phoenix, New York, all of them, they fall apart in the playoffs because then you can play D in the playoffs, you know, and it's not a back-to-back -back game, overnighters, all that stuff. And that's why they always fall apart. You know. JP, LA championship window is damn near over with. What you mean damn near over? It is over. <laughs> damn near. That's over. They ain't winning no chip. It's over. Even if AD was healthy next year. What 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 they they don't have any shoot. That roster is horrendous horrendous he should have just kept the players he had instead of making that westbrook trade they should have just kept that team together gave uh what you call it more time playing time instead of putting him on the bench what's old boy named the small forward uh but uh they the lakers uh their their roster is is screwed in so many ways no shooters, older players, no cap space. Can't trade some of this stuff. It's just, you know, they, they just hurt, man. The Lakers are hurt. 
you know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, Dan Tony, that's who you was talking about. Yeah, yeah, Dan Tony ain't a, he is a one trick pony. He and that's why he loved that shooting at three. That was the perfect coach for that team to just and for Harden, and that's part of his success too because the Dan Tony style is put the ball in the point guard's hands and let them decide and do whatever they want to do. That's why you saw Steve Nash successful in the Dan Tony system. Jeremy Lin successful in the Dan Tony system. Uh, you saw what you call it, uh, James Harden. It's the same thing. James Harden was the most talented of those three. And that's why he was putting up the biggest numbers and the most success of those three. But that's how he plays. Get the point guard everything and let them decide. Dan Tony used to play over in Europe. And when he was in Europe as a player, Kobe Bryant said that Dan Tony was his favorite player, favorite basketball player. And that's who Kobe Bryant loved to watch the most as a kid over in Europe, Dan Tony. A little tidbit history. <laughs> so Dan Tony was a was a good player that Kobe liked to see. I've never seen Dan Tony ball personally, but you know, that's something that Kobe said. So thought that was interesting. Um so uh we'll see man what do y'all think before i go uh about luca and joel Embiid for mvp um i don't know uh let's see they say mb is the only 30 point a game scorer that averages at least eight rebounds and eight assists a game I ain't know Embiid averaged eight assists. Kyrie is averaging twenty-seven, five, and five. Uh, let's see. See another thing, also, you Dallas fans, remember that Dallas had Jalen Brunson. He's not a scrub, and yeah, Kyrie's better than him, but I think the similar situation that happened with Jalen Brunson is going to happen with Kyrie. And you guys will have a similar results. they similar in size, similar defensively. Kyrie can score better than him, but I think that's going to be somewhat similar uh, to see. Um, now let's talk about this Super Bowl. Y'all let me know who y'all got in the Super Bowl. And I see everybody shy. Y'all don't have to be shy. Y'all can come on up and talk. You ain't got to put the camera on if you don't want. You can you can come up with the mic if it's a name I recognize. You definitely. Um, I don't think MB is going to win, but I think that he should over Luka. Whoever has the best record. See, they don't take into account winning anymore in this NBA stuff. You need to win. I can't give you an MVP trophy and you don't win. It's kind of messed up. They don't want to give it to the Joker because he already won it twice and nobody gets a 3-3 time MVP. Except for Larry Bird. But I wouldn't give it to Jokic either because he already got it twice and ain't won a damn thing. And you're going to give him a three-time MVP and never even... What do he do? First round playoff exits? Like, that don't make sense. Yeah, MVP is a regular season award. And it has nothing to do with that. That is true. And Jokic is a hell of a player. He averaging a triple-double. But I just couldn't do that. They didn't give it to Jordan, so I ain't giving it to him. And Jordan was the best in the league, without a doubt. They gave it to Carl Malone ass. 
<laughs> I still can't believe they gave it to Carl Malone. And then they gave it they gave it to Barkley. Then they gave it to Carl Malone. Mike's supposed to have three back well, three champions. He's supposed to have it twice. Three P MVPs twice. So you know, that's that bull. Anyway, on to the NFL. So, I think, and I'm just trying to do this to be different, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, I do think, where's the Super Bowl, that the Chiefs will win if the Eagles have a turnover. The Eagles turnover could hurt their game plan. Especially if, let's say they get the ball second. So say that the Chiefs win the coin toss and get the ball first and are able to score. So it's going to put pressure on the Eagles' defense. From the get go, if the Chiefs, if they are able to score, this is going to be probably one of the most important drives of the game, I think, because it could determine the rest of the game. If they are able to score on that opening drive, it could put a little pressure on the Eagles from the get go. Now, we know the Eagles going to run, ground and pound, try to shove it down their throat. And that's cool. But they, if they have a turnover, then they'll have to start to pass, which will put more pressure on, uh, you know, Jalen. And uh, not to say he's going to fold, but I think that's not their plan and their best option to win. That's not in their identity best interest and so now if the Chiefs have a turnover it's game over because everybody know they gonna have to pass it for sure then and uh, it's just a wrap you know so I think that whoever has the turnover really is is the one that's really gonna lose and I definitely think that turnover coming from, to be honest with you, I'm just trying to pick outside the box. Think outside the box. Chances are the Chiefs will have a turnover before the Eagles because they pass him more and they're not going to throw the ball. And everybody knows that. And so that's kind of leaving... Uh, an option for a turnover more. I'm trying to check this thing over here at the same time. So uh, we'll see. Is this? Uh, so, it, you know, that's why whenever you see coaching, I think NFL coaching is the most important out of all the coaching because basketball and and baseball maybe is important, but basketball is not as important. It is important in playoffs, but a lot of talent can come through in basketball courts easier. Um, not always. We saw what happened in Brooklyn, whereas football – you have to have your teams ready, well coached, not have any turnovers, not make any mistakes, um, no penalties, any of that. And uh, and all of that could definitely affect the game. What is this? They're going to show it. Making sense. Bengals, Chiefs, 49ers, Eagles. Oh, this is old. Okay. Anyway, um, I definitely uh, think it's a chance. I mean, everybody is saying Eagles. 
I just don't like to be on the bandwagon. That girl, what is up with you? You say, Jay, let's put some money on the bet. I got the Eagles. All right, let's make it. Let's make it happen. What's up? What you talking? See, I don't know. You going you going you going to show up? Don't don't Welsh. Don't Welsh on the bet if I win now. Got to show up. Show up and show out now that girl. <laughs> Khadija, Eagles run game been iffy too. And and that's the thing right there. Khadija been on it, girl. Uh, well, you should have came on live and talked. But uh, it has, and that's more of their identity. And so if their run game is iffy during the Super Bowl, ooh, I don't know what they's going to do. I mean, you don't want to put the uh, ball in your quarterback's hands right now. Not that he's a scrub, because I remember talking to this youngster last year again. Man, I had to tell these people so much stuff. He was talking about how bad the quarterback is, want to get rid of him, and all of this stuff and that stuff. And I'm like, he just started playing. You got to give him a chance. What is your problem? And, uh, you know, now I'm pretty sure he jumping up and down talking about how great and happy it is that he got him and and all of this stuff but uh you know um even with that being said i still wouldn't want to put the ball in Jalen's arm in the super bowl not again saying that he's a scrub but he's still young still trying to make it happen let's see what he did this regular season Jalen Hurts, 3,700 yards, 22 touchdowns, six interceptions. So he's pretty good as far as touchdown to turnover ratio. Not a whole lot of touchdowns, but I remember when they got Gardner Minshew and the fool went nuts. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, the run game, though. No, that's been the thing with Jalen Hurts putting up nearly a thousand yards, seven hundred, and then you got Miles Sanders with twelve hundred, another two hundred. I mean, you you putting up two thousand yards rushing, ground and pound. Plus, you have those damn uh, linemen, and then with AJ Brown from Cincinnati, he had a great year for fifteen hundred yards this year. Devonte Smith. You know, so they, they got some some weapons. And it's going to be a hell of a game, to say the least. Um, they The pressure from their big four, that's what's going to really count. I mean, you got Brandon Graham, 11 sacks, 11 from Sweat, and 16 from Riddick, 11 from Hargrave. That's a lot right there, them four boys. That's That's... That's right there. That's pretty good. It's been a long time since I can remember seeing four players on the line with over 10 sacks apiece. So I give them credit on that one. You know, they they doing good. Khadija, you ready for that halftime show? <laughs> looking forward to it. How many of y'all looking forward to the halftime show? How many of y'all like them Super Bowl commercials still? Um, I think they say it's what? A million dollars for 15 seconds or something? <laughs> 15 second commercial? Something like that. Uh, Khadija, you say, so Jalen got to make it happen. I wonder if his shoulder is better. Well, you know, when they have something like this, they work on it multiple times a day they send in the massage the trainers they putting on all the gels and creams they may even give them a few injections or whatever so they're working on that every day multiple times a day for the next two weeks because he's been off for two weeks pretty much so he'll be feeling better definitely i mean the way that they take care of these guys when there's something like that for a game like this, it can make you jealous. <laughs> they get, like, pampered, taken care of, especially it's the Super Bowl. 
They send the trainers there probably twice, three times a day, rubbing them, shaking them, flipping them. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he'd be all right. Um, what's my score predictions? Let's see. Score for the Super Bowl. Ah. Uh, Man, it's going to be a low-scoring game, I think. Um, I do think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a 24-21 game with Philly winning. I know I say KFC. I'm about to say KFC. But I can see actually 24-21 for either team. I'm going to pick Kansas City and I'm going to stick with it. But I don't see either team winning by more than a field goal. And I don't really see anybody really scoring too much except for off of turnovers. Remember this. If you remember anything I say about this for the Super Bowl. Turnovers will decide who wins. So when when the game is on and you see them turnovers, remember, you'd be like, there it is. Jay said it. And that's going to switch the momentum. You know, um, so whoever has the first turnover early, it's got to be early. Because if it's points on the board already, it, it could swing the momentum, but it's not the same as if you put that pressure on the other team to score. If you score and then get a turnover and score again or something, you can put the pressure on the other team to then want to pass and not run as much. And if it's Kansas City, you already know they're going to pretty much pass. And then if they down, then you really know they got to go to their passing game, which, you know, in football, it can make you predictable. When there's predictability in your playbook, that's a problem. I think that's what's wrong with the Dallas coach. His damn playbook is predictable. He has no ingenuity with his playbook. That's why Aaron Rodgers didn't want to be with his ass no more in, in Green Bay. And now they're trying to put it on Dak. Yeah, Dak did throw some N.O.s. But their play calling is whack. Their strategy is whack. And I don't know, man. I wouldn't want him as my head coach. And now they're talking about he going to call the plays. As if he know what he doing any better than anybody else. That's crazy. So, anyway. Khadija, you say you was going to say no more than 20 as far as the score. Yeah, that's why I say 24-21. I don't see it as a high-scoring game. I do think that uh, we can get three touchdowns, though. I don't think that's hard. I think that each team could at least get two touchdowns on their own and maybe one off of a turnover or some easy positioning or something. So I I could see three touchdowns happening for either team. And it's going to take a field goal to really break it up. Um, That's how I see it. I don't see it being too much. So, Khadija, you say Gardner going to be looking for them turnovers. I mean, that's why I try to tell uh, some people when I talk to them about football, because a lot of people don't realize this because these are not the so-called sexy positions, the quarterback, running back, wide receivers, and, uh, you know, the Deion Sanders or whatever. But the game is really won with the fat boys, the big boys on the line, man. Those are the guys that really make a difference and really decide what's going to happen. You got a good offensive line. The quarterback can get protected. He can make some plays. You might be all right tonight. 
You got a good defensive line. They can put that pressure. It don't matter what you got on the other side. If they just that good, y'all going to have a hell of a night tonight. So, you know, and if you come across a team that got a good defensive line and offensive line, they can put pressure and protect. That's that's a big difference. That's the start of a championship team. A lot of people don't realize that's the start of a championship team is to be able to uh, have that. So, you know, Khadija, you say, I believe the Eagles going to do what the Bengals didn't do, make Patrick remember his ankle hurt. I know, right? They pushed his ass out of the damn... Uh, out of the damn out of bounds old boy down there bust his knee doing that <laughs> but uh i think patrick is gonna be getting worked on just like uh what you call it Jalen. so they've been putting treatment on his ankle every day two three times a day icing it cooling it hotting it all of that stuff uh shooting it up if that's what's needed or whatever is needed they got them rubbing it flipping it twisting it, smacking it, holding it down. Oh, no, <laughs> same thing. So I believe that he will be a lot better come time for the game. Um, the amount of work they give these guys to get better is, man, make you jealous. I wish I could get somebody to rub me down two, three times a day. <laughs> you know, that's that's some straight pampering right there. Talking and grubbing. What up, brother? You say I'm going with the Eagles. I like their defense more, but offenses are pretty good. Both offenses are pretty good. Yeah. Um, everybody going with the Eagles. Their defense has been. It's been great. They've had a really good defense. Put it this way. Their front four has been great. They got an all-time great front four right now this season. All-time great front four. Their total defense is not like an all-time great 85 Bears defense. But their front four, they had an all-time great season. They had an all-time great season. And uh, and their defense is good. Um, the Chiefs' line has to hold up. I mean, when Mahomes wasn't doing good, that's when the line was all injured and broke up. Whenever he got a line, that boy is in the Super Bowl. So we'll see, man. That's, that's what it's coming down to. Who do you trust more? Uh, you trust the line of... Uh, of the Chiefs, or you trust the, you know, front four, that front defensive line of the Eagles. You know, that's what it's going to come down to. <laughs> Talking and grubbing, you say, I don't trust the Chiefs secondary. They get burned a lot on big plays. Yeah, I mean, secondaries are harder to play nowadays because you can't touch nobody and all of that stuff. And uh, and then they don't have the best secondary either. Um, their, part of their game is to put pressure on the defense through offense. Um, but they their secondary is not the worst if their front four can get and put some pressure on them. Um Khadijah, you say Fletcher Cox and Travis Kelsey and them are coming. Yeah, Man, that's true. It's, it's going to be a good game. This is probably one of the best Super Bowl matchups that I could think of since probably Giants-Patriots, maybe, that I could think of. That is a good matchup in styles and stuff like that. Um, I definitely didn't think the Giants and Patriots, when the Patriots were undefeated, I definitely didn't see them losing that one. I thought it was a good matchup. See, that's another legendary front four defense. That Giants teams, 
uh, with them two Super Bowls with Eli Manning. Those were legendary front four defenses. With Strahan and uh, what's old boy with the finger blow off. <laughs> so when you got that front four like that, that you can win. They did it twice. So, hey, you they can't win. And you don't need a dominant quarterback because Eli Manning, nobody I don't think will ever say was dominant. He was effective. He was good. Don't turn the ball over. And that's what he did in the playoffs. Now, in the regular season, he throws some N.O.s. It ain't no. <laughs> yeah, Eli tossed that boy. But in the playoffs, he was he was good. He was solid. And if Jalen Ramsey could do that and that front four put up the same similar numbers, yeah, they could make something happen. Definitely. So, talking and grubbing, you say Seahawks and Patriots was a great Super Bowl matchup too. Yeah, that was. That was a good one. Came down to the to the goal line run with uh, Beast Mode. Yeah, that was a real good matchup. That was. And uh, Russell Wilson, JPP, that's who I was talking about, finger blow. Yeah, he won with the Bucks with uh, Brady, JPP. He still was pretty good, man. And he was young during those times when he was with the Giants. That's why he's still pretty good now, even though all he got is a middle finger. <laughs> JPP. Uh, but uh, I think Russell Wilson's going to do good now that they have Sean Payton. Because Sean Payton pretty much had uh, Drew Bledsoe. Who is damn near exactly like Russell Wilson in my book? I think they are as close to the same player as it can get. Same height, weight, they just ain't the same color. <laughs> same throwing styles. I mean, Wilson can run, though. Bledsoe didn't run, but I mean, Breeze didn't run. But Wilson is not considered a running quarterback. He don't run all the time. He just can move and run. So I think Sean Payton and Denver are going to be the team to look out for. I'm going to get them two years. They'll be in the Super Bowl. Watch. He going to get it together this year. He going to get the finishing touches for next year. And they'll be in the Super Bowl two to three years minimum. Sean Payton and Russell Wilson and Denver be in the Super Bowl. You know, Mike Stray was was a beast. You see him in Magic Mike. <laughs> Magic Mike. He picked the old big girl up. Ready to slap it down, baby. <laughs> uh, Norris Fry, what up, though? Love from the D for you. Everybody from the D say, what up, though? <laughs> yep, yep. So, I mean, you all let me know in the comments who you got for the Super Bowl. Also, you can talk about the Kyrie trade. Um, what job do you know of that you don't have to do the job and keep getting paid and they going to just keep you on the job and, and treat you like you a good employee? I mean, that's just not realistic. He done went too far, did too much. And I think he brought it all on himself. Not the media, not Stephen A. and other people. He did that. He chose what to tweet, what to do, what not to do. Show up, not show up. Say what he said, not say. He did that to himself. And for that... I don't have any sympathy for the situation he in. Um, so, I don't think he'll stay with Dallas. I think he'll be there the rest of the season, be a free agent, and somebody offer him some good money, but it'd only be a two-year deal, three at the most, and that three-year deal would be insane. But, hey, it is what it is. They figure they could probably get the first year good, Maybe they can get him doing right for the second year because that third year, if it's a team option, I'll do a three-year. 
because that means it's really a two year because if you mess up that second year you gone so you need to do right the first year otherwise i'm gonna remember you screwed me out of two of my years so one of the two so we'll see anthony mo got kansas city what's up kansas cities <laughs> kc all day okay Talking and grubbing. It was only a matter of time Kyrie was going to leave Brooklyn. I know. He cost them the championship. It's over. Khadija. Sean, a strict coach. So, yeah, they're going to do well. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, y'all, I'm about to get up out of here. I appreciate everybody for uh, coming through. Let me know if you want to do more sports talk. I'll see y'all on the next one. I appreciate everybody. And uh, all the comments. Let me know what you think about Kyrie and the Super Bowl. And I'll see you later. Deuces. Oh.